but winning isn't easy. Let's answer the question, does a disability insurance carrier have to consider my subjective complaints of pain before they ultimately deny my claim? Now, there's no law that requires an employer to offer any type of benefits like group health benefits, life insurance, or pension. And the employer who decides to offer the benefits calls the shots. They get to decide what benefits to offer, the eligibility requirements for those benefits, and what you have to prove to get those benefits. The details, the definitions in your ERISA disability policy or plan can make or break your case. So before you stop work and apply for your benefits or even appeal the denial or termination of your benefits, you must get out the disability policy or plan. You want to look at the definition of disability and whether there's an objective requirement of proof of disability. You have to objectively prove the diagnosis objectively prove your restrictions and limitations, and objectively prove why you can't do the material and substantial duties of your occupation. And that's what Ms. Nassif should have done in her disability claim. Now, she had severe lumbar problems, and she applied for disability benefits because she had to lay down every 20 to 30 minutes, every hour, and that would help prevent her severe and disabling back pain. The carrier, uh, for Aurora Healthcare paid 24 months of own occupation benefits based on an inability to do her own occupation. But guess what? After 24 months, the definition of disability changed from an inability to perform her own occupation to an inability to perform any occupation. And guess what? Aurora Health determined that she could perform sedentary work and they denied her any occupation claim. Now this case ended up in federal court in Wisconsin. And the judge had to decide whether or not the denial was arbitrary and capricious. So what did the judge do? The judge turned to the disability plan and started reading. And it said, if you become disabled, you will be required to furnish objective medical evidence, which supports your disability as often as the claim administrator requires. Your disability must be supported by current objective medical evidence. And guess what? The disability plan defined objective medical evidence. Are you ready for this definition? The definition was a measurably independently observable abnormality, which is uh, evidenced by one or more standard medical diagnostic procedures, including tests, clinical examinations, or procedures that support the presence of a disability or indicate a functional limitation. Not all tests or test results will meet the criteria of objective medical evidence. Self-reported symptoms are not considered objective and they don't establish eligibility for benefits under this plan. Objective medical evidence may consist of records from your licensed physician, narrative reports, x-rays, and other medical records, and it has to correlate to clinical findings of disability. That's a mouthful and that was an incredibly difficult standard for her to meet. The plan clearly states that self-reported symptoms of pain aren't objective, and they don't establish eligibility for any occupation long-term disability benefits. Because there was no objective medical evidence that uh, corresponded to this definition, her subjective complaints of pain and dysfunction weren't enough to overcome the wrong, the, the claims denial. In fact, it wasn't wrong. It was right based on the terms of this definition. And you can see that how your policy defines, um, disability and objective medical evidence can be the key to getting your benefits or it can blow up your disability claim. Got it? All right. Let's take a break. <laughs> 